Hi everyone, if this is your first time to my channel, this is Dream with Shan and I'm Shan. I am a medical student, I am a mom, I am a nonprofit organizer, and a few other things. But as the title says, this video is about whether or not a student should consider deceleration um, in medical school. And let me just define deceleration for you because it may be a different term at different schools or just depending on what region you're in. In medical school, generally, um, to complete your medical degree or your osteopathic um, medicine degree, it takes four years. Or in most degree programs, are set at a standard of four years. Um, but anytime throughout the four years, you can either electively um, reduce your course load um, over um, a two-year period for one year, or you can be asked or recommended by your um, administrator, administration, or faculty to um, take more time to complete your degree. Um, generally it's done between either your first and second year and even sometimes it may be offered during your third and fourth year. But generally because your first and second year are your um, non-clinical years when you're in the classroom doing more um, book work and exams and getting your foundation for medical school and for your clinical training, um, those are generally the years in which or the time in which people decide to decelerate. I have a previous video where I talked about um, my personal decision to decelerate and the things that were um, happening in my life and whether I was going to quit school or, decel or decelerate or reduce my load but I decided to make this video because deceleration is a very very critical topic and it's something that should not be taken lightly um, I'm a second year student again and around this time is when students kind of think about um, if they can handle the rigors of medical school or if they need to possibly um, take longer or extend their time out and also when you're in first year this is the time when you're looking at your habits and your patterns and how you study and things like that and it's something that you may want to consider um, in the summertime before you reach second year but again so the purpose or the reason why I decided to do this video was because um, I just was reflecting on individuals that were um, once in my class and who were no longer um, with us, unfortunately. It was like one day I just was like, hey, you know, just thinking I haven't seen so-and-so in so long, you know, what happened to them or where did they go or are they in rotations and this, that, and the other. And then I eventually found out that they were dismissed from school. And fortunately, my thought process when I went into medical school and what a lot of people actually told me was the fact that oh it's so hard to get into medical school you know that's the hurdle it's the MCAT it's the admissions it's the thousands of people applying and they only accepting you know a certain amount of people but once you're in you know you're in and you know they make sure they keep you but that's honestly not the real truth about the situation um, once you get in medical school that is like one of the hardest things that you've ever had to do is to get in probably but it's also hard to stay in school if you have other factors that are competing in your life and unfortunately for some schools if you don't meet their criteria no matter how much they loved you and liked you on your during the interview trail or during the admissions process they will not hesitate to let you go and that's the real fact about it so you really have to make educated and smart decisions as you're going through medical school to ensure that you get there you um, get the grades you need or maintain the grades you need and you get your degree and you get out of there and become a doctor because that four to five or whatever your period that you're in that degree program is really significant and if you do something wrong or if something happens that school will let you go because it's just like a job you know jobs fire people all the time um, it happens unfortunately but it's a part of life and unfortunately people get dismissed from medical school all the time people quit medical school all the time um it's, those are things that not everybody really talks about no one really talks about having to repeat a year because it's taboo no one talks about having to fail step because it's taboo but it happens no one talks about not matching but it happens and these are real life scenarios that um, i want to be able to tackle and talk about with students um just to give you the other side of things um I am in the new mindset of just being really positive and really open and encouraging and I want to use this video to encourage individuals to be your number one supporter and to make sure that you are advocating for yourself. And I want to use this video to use this video as a tool to help people. And the first thing I'll say is when you are considering deceleration or taking time off of school or you know extending your um, degree out into five years, first thing you need to do is know yourself. Um, know what you're capable of know the limits that you're able to take because of course we can always stretch ourselves 
but what is that healthy limit that you can stretch yourself and that you're willing to stretch yourself without sacrificing so much of who you are um when i was going through the process of deciding whether or not to take time off um or t to the accelerator whatever my options were i decided to reach out to people who were going through similar situations or who had already done what i was seeking or thinking about doing and that was so key because I got different perspectives. I spoke to a guy who was doing really horrible all of second year, but he, and he was recommended to decelerate by administration. He said, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to decelerate. I'm going to push through. I'm going to pray. He was a very spiritual guy and he ended up, you know, going through the year and in eventually passing his classes he passed um his step one board exams and he went on to third year clinical rotations and i was like wow that's really you know admirable of you and really great and it's, i'm glad that you actually stuck to your plan and you were able to you know make it through second year without actually decelerating and proving them wrong in a sense um, but i also spoke to a young lady who said that deceleration was never in her mind you know she had done well first year second she was doing okay but she somehow slipped through the cracks and when she did some self-reflection she thought about her time just in college and how she never really did a full course load it was never something that she was comfortable or capable of doing in a sense that you know how some students will take um, 18 credits or 22 credits or whatever their max can be at their school she always took 12 to 14 because that's what she was comfortable with and she would do that during the school year and then during the summer she would um, take classes to make sure that she had met her course load for that entire year um, and she did that every year and that's how she was successful and she said that when she thought about deceleration and taking the full course load of second year she really thought well hey if this is what I've done in the past and I was successful why does it seem so daunting now for me to think about taking an extended year um and she said it was the best decision she had ever made in her life and so you know i got varying opinions and varying um varying information from different people depending on who i talked to but at the end of the day um they all were able to give me some type of insight on how they were self-reflective of themselves and how they really had to know themselves to know you know what they were capable of and what they could do um so i really did appreciate that Another thing that I would suggest is every school has a student handbook with their policies and procedures in it. I say go through that, find the section on either leave of absence or on deceleration or taking extended um, degree routes and understand what, what your school's policies are and how it relates to what you want to do because that's the first step to knowing if it's something that's feasible for you because while you may think that taking... Um, the decelerated route may be best for you you may really need to take um, a leave of absence because there could be things that are going on in your personal life um, things that you're battling just you know in general that taking two years to do the degree program is really not going to help because you're still not taking yourself out of the environment and making sure that you are healthy um, I had a student that I knew who decided to decelerate and she decelerated and she assumed that that was going to be the answer to all of her problems but she eventually was dismissed from school anyway um and from just my conversations with her she the year that she decided to decelerate she was going through so many issues at home with family from illnesses to just like so many issues that she may have been she may have been better suited taking a leave of absence versus actually decelerating because while you know she was able to extend her year and do some of those classes over she still had the same problems at home and nothing was being addressed personally so um while deceleration is an option there are many other options and again that's where your student handbook comes in so that you can see what really works for you um and my thing was this year when i after you know i kind of had like the little thought of like where are all these people like i was looking for like four or five people that you know i hadn't seen in a while and a few of them i end up finding out okay oh you know wow they're here on this rotation then the others i end up finding out that they got dismissed and i was like oh my god the school actually dismisses people and i'm like duh <laughs> yeah it happens and it just but you don't think it's really going to happen to somebody that you know because you know your school says oh they're so tight-knit or they're the family environment this that, and the other but at the end of the day scores matter grades matter and every school wants to be attractive to future applicants. They don't want a student 
um, who has to take so many, who they believe is going to be a liability and has to take so many attempts to either pass their boards um, because that messes up their first pass, right? They're, that messes up the statistics that they're able to show to future applicants. And this is like real life information. Like a lot of schools are not going to tell you this. A lot of students are not going to say this, but this is real life stuff. So definitely know who you are and know your school um, when you decide to make that decision. So in general, you just really have to know what you're capable of doing, um, both physically, mentally, and, you know, health-wise, because in a lot of situations, we like to tell ourselves, you know, push through, push through, because that's what they, that's what most people will tell you, that's what you want to do, that's what you hope you can do, but in reality, you have to know yourself, and you have to know your limits. Like, in the situation I mentioned for the young lady that decelerated but still was dismissed from school, I'm sure she said she wanted to push through and, you know, make it to her next year and to, you know, eventually get out of school, but you have to do what's best for you. You have to know your limits. And one thing I'll say is like, cause I came from a working environment before I came to school, the job and medical school are not the same. Um, in medical school, you're expected to come to school and, or come to clinic, you know, brains lead or shine, you know, you are expected to be there. Um, if you have a death in the family, you know, I'm sorry to say this, but some schools will tell you they still expect you to be there. However, with a job, you have a death, you have, you know, some situation, you get bereavement time, you get a few days off to, you know, compose yourself, you know, feel how you want to feel, cry, grunt, scream, what have you. But in medical school, you do not have that. And I mean, it makes us stronger in some senses, but it also can hinder us in other ways. Um, medical school is by no means the most horrible place to be in the world. It is a great place for you to learn. It's a great place for you to gather the skills you need to be an effective and awesome physician. But you also have to know that there are sacrifices that you will make. You have to be willing to make those sacrifices. And in times when you're not willing to make those sacrifices, you have to know what um, what your limits are, what you, what you will and what you won't do. Um, what I will say is there is a caveat to decelerating. Um, and this is what I've heard from both four few students and administrators, my dean at my school. She indicated that there are some programs that will automatically filter you out when you're applying for residency if they see that you have had more than four years of educational time for that degree. Um, I think it may be slightly different um, if you're in an MD, PhD, or MD, MBA program because they have that information of that second degree that you were obtaining while you're in school. But um, other than that, you will be automatically filtered out. And again, that is something that you have to consider when decelerating. But think about it like this when you're trying to say, oh, well, wow, I don't want a school to filter me out because I did an extra year. I mean, if your grades are poor and your test scores are poor and you fail um, an exam, and I don't mean just a regular exam, but if you fail step, step one or step two, or if you, you know, have discrepancies on your transcript they're going to screen you out anyway so i mean you just have to weigh the pros and cons do you rather be screened out um for poor grades and that's going to be most likely more schools screening you out for that and because of failures on board exams or do you want to be screened out by select few schools that won't accept you because you took an extra year um you can always explain that extra year in your application and there's other ways to kind of get around it but there's certain again certain schools that will automatically screen you out so again these are things that you can consider um for me like i said i love to just um, talk to people who have been in my situation and I continue to make sure that I reach out to individuals who are fourth years and who are practicing physicians and residents and things like that who have made it beyond the point that I'm trying to be and who have been in my shoes literally my shoes as in they decelerated um, the thing about life is it is always changing and it's never life is never going to be stagnant you know life is always going to be moving and you have to be able to adjust there are things that are going to happen to you in your life that you don't expect for one did I expect that I was not going to go to medical school straight out of college no did I expect that I was going to eventually get into medical school then have to decelerate no things happen but I'm in a position right now where I feel good about where I am I am able to focus on my courses focus on the things that matter and try my best to be the best student that I can be my grades are looking better I'm feeling better 
and I mean not every turn is gonna be the right turn for you some turns that you make will go left but it's okay because you will eventually get back on track and when I try to reiterate to myself and to people that I talk to everybody's path is different you know just because they say that you go from A to B to C to get to medical school or A to B to C to get to whatever your your goal is that does not mean that sometimes you didn't go you know A B D E then C just to get there so always keep that in mind um, and if you're watching this video and you have ever either decelerated from medical school been dismissed from medical school you know or a similar experience in school where it put you off track from where you thought you were going to be I would love to read your comments love to hear your testimony just love to get feedback from you because again this is always a learning process for me and I'm always interested in um, speaking to people to kind of just give me more insight and just to fellowship with individuals who um, are in similar situations so Thanks again for watching. Again, this video is meant to be very informative. Um, it is for first and second years mainly because those are the critical periods in which they may decide that they want to decelerate. Um, but it's also for anyone um, throughout your journey in medical school because at any time you can decide that you need to take more time to be the best person and best applicant that you can be.